Hello everyone, I'm Callista Stevens with the McCurtain County, Oklahoma 4-H Dutch Oven Club and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Dutch oven safety. There are many different styles of Dutch oven cooking. Uh, we're all familiar with the chuck wagon sitting around the campfire, pulling out a few coals and having a bubbling stew. We can cook at home, which is a unique style. It's very informal. Uh, with very little equipment. We have our own kitchen to pull from. We can go camping and cook around the campfire, which is a lot of fun. But today we're going to talk about cooking with kids. In our Dutch Oven Club, we typically have 6 to 12 kids cooking at one time, and that can get a little chaotic. Uh, we want to make sure that our campsite is well organized and that we've put plenty of thought into safety every time. Safety habits, safety routines. We want our kids to hold one another accountable for safety. We want our kids to look out for one another and help one another. So today I'm going to show you how we go about setting up our campsite. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Dutch oven itself. This is a 6 quart 12 inch Dutch oven and this is an 8 quart 12 inch Dutch oven. Uh, these are both 12 inches across. One is shallow and one is deep. Typically the deep Dutch ovens are for stews, um, roasts, things like that, and the shallow ovens are for baking, although the deep one is my favorite one for baking a big nice fluffy loaf of bread. These are technically camp ovens because you can see the lip around the top that holds the charcoal and they have legs underneath. The legs serve two purposes. They keep the um, oven up off of the charcoal so that we don't burn the bottom of the food. And it also keeps us from smothering our charcoal because if that oven sits down on the charcoal, it's gonna put that fire out. One thing we like to do with our ovens is tag them with any kind of metal tag. Uh, we encourage kids to bring their own ovens so that they're familiar with them and that they can easily go home and use them. And this, this ensures that they get their oven to take back home and care for. The next piece of equipment we're going to talk about is the chimney. This chimney um, holds your charcoal inside this basket in the top. And in the bottom, there's a recess where you can put newspaper and light your, your charcoal. And... You're going to need a lighter, typically a long lighter works best. You're going to need a lid lifter. And in our club, we use long tongs always for charcoal. We have short tongs in our kit for working with food, but this keeps us from having to wash so many dishes, and it keeps the kids a little further away from the fire. You're going to need a trivet. A wooden trivet to set your Dutch ovens on. Now these have been specialized for me it's just a 12 inch piece of plywood but we cut out the middle and that way when I stack my ovens up for transport I can set them one on top of another. If it didn't have the hole in the middle then this handle would cause it to wobble and it wouldn't travel as well. Um, the big purpose that this serves is when we put a hot oven on this table, uh, it's a heat barrier and it's going to keep that hot oven from burning through your table. A lid rack um, provides a place for kids to put the lids of the Dutch ovens so that the lid doesn't get dirty. Gloves are always a good thing, and you don't really need a set of gloves for every kid. The gloves are expensive. Um, usually, one set of gloves for every three or four kids is sufficient. And you're going to need your charcoal cooking guide. This is a very, very handy guide. Um, this is the one I started out with. You're going to formulate your own way of doing things, but you've got to start somewhere, and this is a good place to start. We're going to touch on some of the other things that go along with cooking with a Dutch oven team, and I'm going to explain what I mean by team. 
typically in 4-H, we have three kids per Dutch oven team, and each team is responsible for three dishes. You can split that up as in one kid per dish, or you can have one child handling food preparation and another child handling the heat management. We're going to start with the cutting equipment. You're going to need cutting boards, and you're going to have a separate cutting board for meat and a separate cutting board for vegetables and fruit and that kind of thing. You're going to have knives, and you need to teach these kids how to use a knife correctly. One thing to keep in mind is we're going to be cooking in public a lot of the time, and we want to account for that person that walks up and touches your equipment. We don't want a knife sitting out on the table without a sheath on it. We always want to buy our knives uh, with a sheath like this. And you're going to grab it from the back and pull out. And then very carefully replace it. Um, always wash, wash your knife immediately and put it back down with the sheath on it. We are uncompromising about this. Kids must practice knife safety. We're going to have a wash tub and a rinse tub. And I like to color code and have a hand washing tub separately. And you're going to have a cooler for each team. Now, if we're cooking for an event and we're not really split up into teams, I like to have a separate cooler for meat versus the other ingredients. One thing to consider when you're cooking with these kids is how they show up. They are going to be dealing with the public. They are going to be speaking to people. They're going to be handling food in front of people. You want them to show up appropriately dressed for the occasion. Uh, girls should always have their hair up. Caps are a great idea, um, even for girls, for everybody. It, it provides a nice little uniform. We like to have aprons, and we like for every kid to have a, uh, a wash rag of their own. Um, you're gonna make sure their hands are neat and clean. Um, sometimes you have to train this. Uh, you want no nail polish or a very neutral nail polish. You want the kids to not have long raggedy sleeves. Um, a lot of times we roll them up or encourage t-shirts. You want them to have sturdy shoes. Don't let them show up in flip-flops. That's a burn danger. Uh, we never let that happen. And you want them to have long pants because sometimes they could brush up against a hot Dutch oven and it could burn them. When we're cooking with these kids, we're not cooking with a big campfire. It doesn't look like the threat of fire ought to be very big. Really, if you practice safety, uh, it's pretty minimal, but you always want to be prepared just in case. Most of the time, our team doesn't cook with grease, so we're not going to have many grease fires, but we like to be prepared just in case. We take our fire extinguisher with us, the only time we've had to use it was for a different team. So that's a reason it's great to be prepared. Uh, it was a team of grown-ups cooking. Um, there's no way we could have known there was a grease fire, but we happened to have a fire extinguisher. For our purposes, this is gonna be our best defense. Our dishwater. Teach your kids, don't hesitate to throw a hand of dishwater on a fire. Uh, it's gonna take care of the problem they're not going to um, go crazy and run around in circles. They're going to be prepared and know what to do. Teach them this ahead of time and remind them at every single practice they have a tool to take care of a fire. Next, we're going to move over to our cooking area. It's very, very, very important that this area be well organized. Uh, I put everything regardless of what I'm cooking on in a straight line and I expect the kids to cook from one side. Typically we'll set up our plastic food preparation tables on a, in a straight line and then right behind them we'll put our, our heat management area. And make sure that you have a kids cooking station, a kids food prep station right in front of where they're going to heat up and cook their food. That saves a lot of confusion for the whole group. Okay, we have um, some equipment here to talk about. This is a, a metal feed pan, and it serves two purposes. 
Uh, one, if you used like this one, it's a liner. If you're cooking on on concrete or dirt or don't worry, don't care about your grass, then you can just use a liner. That's a very simple way uh, to cook. You can start your chimney in there or you can cook um, directly in the Dutch oven in your pan liner. When we started, that's all we used and we would have everything lined up in a straight row and it worked very, very, very well. Uh, if you're worried about the surface underneath, um, you can do them in this configuration. This is just one on top of another and it provides a little air space so that you don't damage that surface underneath. We've cooked on asphalt before and this system worked very, very well. This is a Dutch oven cooking table. And it is beneficial because it raises your cooking surface up and makes it more comfortable. It does provide challenges because when you're cooking with kids, some of them are vertically challenged. Um, we cook with kids as young as nine years old and they're gonna have a hard time lifting that heavy pot up onto that table. So for those little ones, we always cook in the, the metal feed pans. These tables do come with wind screens. The screens that go with this one are about this tall and some of the other ones are a little bit taller and they do have great benefits because they keep the wind from affecting what you're cooking so much. This is the surface um, that you're going to cook directly on and one big advantage of this is you can serve your food directly from this. Uh, if you have a simmering stew you can just have a few charcoals underneath and you can serve directly from this table. Now, even when we're cooking with these tall tables, um, I like to use the metal feed pans in between, just like I have them set up now, because these tables will hold about three Dutch ovens each. And having these metal feed pans gives us a designated place to have our charcoal. We'll start our charcoal in this chimney and then when it gets ready, we'll dump it into the pan and use it directly from there. And I like one next to each table, and that way kids aren't moving a long way with heart charcoal. Now we're gonna learn how to light a chimney. Our heat source today is gonna be charcoal. You can use any brand you want, but stick with the same brand every single time so that your kids get used to the same uh, lighting time and the same burn time. What we have here is our chimney with paper underneath. I'm gonna set it flat in my pan. And I'm gonna pour charcoal. take my lighter. Thank you. <laughs> and light the paper in the bottom. I like to slant my uh, chimney inside this pig pan just a little bit. I call it a pig pan. It's a pig feed pan. And that just allows for a little bit more airflow underneath. And then I find that it really, really helps my charcoal to light faster. Now, if you see this, this smoke is gonna die down a little bit and you're gonna start to see just a, some wispy smoke as the newspaper burns up. As long as there's smoke coming out, that charcoal is lighting. When you start to see a little bit of orange on the bottom layers of the charcoal, it's time to pour them out. Uh, just That helps the charcoal to be mixed up and uh, to light more evenly. This charcoal already, already is uh, poured out. And what I'm gonna do is take this lit charcoal and start a second chimney. So this is a neat trick so that you don't have to use the newspaper. Works faster, it's easier. 
I'm going to put about half a dozen in the bottom. Carefully bring it over here. And I'm going to pour charcoal directly on top of that. And from this point on, we're going to wear gloves with everything we do. When we look at these Dutch ovens, this Dutch oven is heating up already. This Dutch oven, if I touch it, it's going to be hot. But it looks exactly the same as this Dutch oven. I always ask my kids, whether it has charcoal on or not, what color is a Dutch oven when it's hot? It's black when it's cold. What color is it when it's hot? It's black. It looks exactly the same. There's no way to tell the difference. So I advise them if you're going to touch a Dutch oven, always use the back of your hand and just kind of feel it a little bit. Because if you try to grasp it, then your instinct with something hot is to grab it even harder and that would create a worse burn. So always touch it with the back of your hand. Always practice safety. Wear gloves. Use long tongs. And this is a handy dandy little tool, the lid lifter. And you need to learn how to use it properly. This is the front of the lid lifter and this is the back. So what you're gonna do is take your hand and put it over the front of the lid lifter and that way you've got your fingers hooked underneath that bar and it's not gonna slip out. You can rotate the top of your Dutch oven by not lifting the lid and just rotating. And you can, uh, you can lift the bottom. We usually do this if it's on the ground. If it's on the top like this, then we use our gloves. Demonstrate, it's, it's much safer, even for someone my height. And about every 10 or 15 minutes, we come in and rotate our ovens 180 degrees, top and the bottom. There are complicated ways to do it. We do it the simple way. And now we're ready to cook. We've got our charcoal poured out. You see how it's a nice gray color, but not deteriorated. There's still a little black on that one. That's a great charcoal to cook with. We're gonna start a roast with carrots and potatoes and all the good stuff. When we put our charcoal up, we use our gloves and our long tongs, and we put about 10 charcoals on the table. We're gonna arrange these in a circle. About one third of our heat goes on the bottom and about two thirds go on the top. We know that heat rises, so it's going to be easy to get the bottom of our dish brown, but it's going to be much harder to push that heat from the top down onto your food. We're going to put about 25 on top, which is usually about a circle and about four in the middle. Now, I like to cook pretty hot. Um, I think this raises it up to about 350 degrees, but the books will tell you it gets quite a bit hotter. My theory is that we haven't preheated these Dutch ovens. So these Dutch ovens are cold. Um, part of the energy from these charcoals are going into raising the heat of our Dutch ovens to a cooking temperature. At first, we followed the book strictly and I found that it wasn't quite hot enough. So if I look at the chart now, I may uh, use what it says in the book, plus um, maybe one on the bottom and two or three on the top. Now this is a place where your deep Dutch oven is gonna make a difference because there's gonna be more space in that Dutch oven uh, for air and it's gonna be harder to push that uh, heat down. So if you're cooking something like a cake, uh, you can cook it in either. It's going to be easier to brown the top in this shallow oven and harder for this, this deep Dutch oven. What you're going to do is simply add more charcoal to the top. Okay, we've got our roast set and ready to go. We're going to wait a little while for our vegetables and our bread. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. 
timing is always going to be a big factor in Dutch oven cooking. Here we have our four pots. Um, I'm going to show you the vegetables and the rolls. The vegetables, I just took a peek at them. I'll show you. They're not coming along quite as fast as I would like. We'll just have a simple vegetable medley. We're going to hook that in, put our hand over the front, and raise the lid. Not coming along quite as fast as I'd like, so I'm going to add oh, 10 more charcoal. You see how these are pretty spent? And these charcoal are pretty spent as well. So we're just going to add those right on the top. And it might even use a few more than that. Okay. Our rolls, on the other hand, I've already removed some charcoal from them because they're coming along a little faster than I would like. Dutch oven cooking is an art. And you're constantly tweaking and checking and learning. And uh, factors like wind and humidity uh, greatly affect how your, your ovens cook. Now I'm going to show you how to rotate uh, the top and the bottom of the Dutch oven. About every 10 or 15 minutes is sufficient on this. <laughs> There's my rooster. You're going to hook your lid lifter in, uh, just like I showed you before, and put your hand over the front and turn the oven 180 degrees. That means if it's facing if the point is facing this way, 180 degrees, the point would be facing the other way. You don't want to lift the lid up every time you check your, you turn your Dutch oven because you lose about 25 degrees every time you raise your lid up to peak. Now we're gonna put our lid lifter away and use our gloves to lift the bale and turn this. 180 degrees. Now one thing to think about, if you're working on the ground in these metal feed pans and kids want to do this, they need to have their feet planted firmly, a little space apart, about shoulder width apart, <laughs> and they can use the tools easily this way, but they need to be very steady. Now's the time we've all been waiting for, time to serve our food. This presents challenges in getting the heat off of our food and getting this hot pot to the table safely. Now normally I would have the kids on the other side, but I'm talking to you, so I'm, this, I'm on this side of the table. Um, this lid, the charcoal on here is still hot, and this pot is still rocket hot. What we're going to do is take our lid lifter and empty all of the charcoal into one pan. Remember to go from the front. And there's an art to that. It takes practice. You're going to want to help the kids through the first few times that they do it. But before you know it, they'll have the hang of it. Okay, I'm holding the back, I'm holding the front, and I'm shaking. Keep in mind as you're doing this that the wind is going to cause those ashes to drift. And you want to be mindful of, of where you're dumping them. Because if the wind is going this way, I don't want to dump my ashes right here because it's going to go over my food. I get ready to move to the table. I'm going to move my lid first. And place it on my trivet. You can place the pot directly on the trivet, 
but this gives you something to do with your lid. Otherwise, you're going to be putting it on a lid rack underneath your table. Either way works. I'm going to use my gloves and move the pot over. And we have a delicious roast. Now we do something very special and fun. Oftentimes, when we're serving, we're going through a crowd because people want to see what's going on. So when we grab this pot, our kids yell, hot stuff coming through. And everybody gets a good laugh and everybody knows there's a danger. thing we do when we're Dutch oven cooking is taking care of our charcoal. Now these charcoal don't have much heat, but they do have a little. And sometimes we cook in dry conditions. Um, we try to keep our fire contained, but we don't ever, ever, ever want to leave a spark. So we're going to keep in mind wind direction. The wind is blowing this way. And I'm going to be careful and stand back because this is going to create steam. I'm going to take care of the charcoal on my table. And I'm going to take care of the charcoal in my pan. I don't let, let the kids take care of this. I like to take care of this. There will be no chance of fire. That pan will be cooled off and ready to discard the ashes and ready to clean up our camp so no one will ever know we were here. Thank you for joining me for Dutch Oven Cooking today. As you get ready to cook with a group of kids, always put safety first. Never, ever, ever sway on your safety rules. Uh, your kids will make them have it and they will practice safety every single time. That will allow them to get creative, have fun, uh, just enjoy the Dutch oven cooking process. Remember that this is not about winning a medal. This is about youth development. You're gonna see so much growth in these kids. You're gonna be amazed. You're gonna see leadership, team building. You're gonna see public speaking. You're gonna see kids that didn't think that they could speak in public, making a presentation about their recipe and not even realizing it. You're gonna see kids with confidence. You're gonna see kids making eye contact. Dutch oven cooking is about so much more than food. So keep it safe, keep it fun, and come and eat.